Hey everyone, Mr. McIntosh here, and Open Core Legacy Patcher has released a new hotfix, 1.4.2. This update fixes two important Wi-Fi issues, and we are going to go over the 1.4.2 update installing on multiple machines and on a broken legacy Wi-Fi machine that has no internet connection and is stuck on 1.3.0. We're going to show you how to fix that, so let's jump in and get started. It has definitely been a busy week for the Open Core Legacy Patcher developers doing everything Everything they can to fix all of the issues that were introduced with Mac OS Sonoma 14.4. The security fixes in 13.6.5 and 12.7.4 caused issues for legacy Wi-Fi drivers. And those machines are anywhere between 2008 and 2012. Those machines were left out in the dust with no Wi-Fi because of that vulnerability was patched a certain way to break those patches. This is one of the things that this 1.4.2 hotfix fixes for all these people with all these older Mac machines that are non-metal that are staying on Ventura and Mac OS Monterey. It's very rare that we see security updates break stuff like this, but here we go. It can happen. So I keep thinking about the recommendation to install the latest updates and I was saying let's hold off for like maybe a few days. When we talk about the stability, it might be a wait maybe a couple days or even a week just to make sure major issues like this don't pop up. Because remember, there's 84 different hardware models that the Open Core Legacy Patcher developers have to support. That is a ton of machines and a ton of work trying to test all these different models. And sometimes things are gonna happen like this. And if they do, it's okay because you waited for a week and you saw this hotfix come out so you're okay if you install 14.1.2 before you make the update. But if you didn't do that and you updated earlier, it's not your fault. You just wanted to install the latest security update, but there was some, definitely some problems here. So that is one of the issues that is fixed and that's one of the main issues. The second issue that was fixed in the 1.4.2 was the auto join issue. Now what that means is, is that anytime you reboot your Mac, you have a saved known Wi-Fi in your list of Wi-Fi connections. So if we go to this machine, this Mac Pro, we can click on Wi-Fi and this is my known network here. And every time I reboot, it connects automatically to this known network. Now you can have multiple known networks, but you have a service priority will, that will connect to the one you always connect to. The auto join issue, what it would happen is it would reboot and it would not automatically connect to that. And a way to get around that was to go into the Wi-Fi settings, click forget this network and rejoin again. But the good news is with the 1.4.2 update, the auto join issue is fixed for modern wireless on Mac OS 14.4. Now I throw around these terms, modern wireless and legacy wireless. They are grouped into those sections because they cover, like that's why it's easy to call out these legacy machines and the modern wireless is any of your newer machines that Wi-Fi patches are needed to be installed. Now Macola and the developers put this really nice table in here so you can see if your machine is part of one of these problems. So there's our legacy Wi-Fi and then we talk about modern modern Wi-Fi, which is all the newer machines. And it can tell you which Broadcom Wi-Fi cards applicable to. So that is a good fix because that was kind of a pain in the in the butt, especially if you didn't know about any of these issues and you installed the update because you've been had a lot of problems in the past and all of a sudden your Wi-Fi wasn't connecting. You're like, what the heck is going on? This is an important hotfix that kind of gets us back to almost everything being fixed except for the non-metal Max that's still in development work with no ETA whatsoever on that for the non-metal. And there is a fix page in the GitHub that you can look at to be able to track this information. And it can tell you, uh, ACNT Aimbot put a nice uh, summary here that kind of talks and Edu Kavas also has put some notes in here who are some of the main developers of the project. So you can keep an eye on this to see if there's any information that is posted here. But for now, if you are a non-metal, stay on 14.3 or 14.3.1 until we have update for non-metal. Now let's jump into testing some of the machines with the 1.4.2 update. If you want an in-depth video um, overview, I did a deep dive with my 1.4.1 video that I released two days ago. And that goes into all the machines and all the different configurations and troubleshooting, uh, 
a deep dive on the fixes and a video like this for a hot fix i want to be able to get that information out as quick as possible to test some of the main devices we've got a mac pro 2013 trash can we've got a mac mini late 2012 and we've got our mac pro 2010 so we've got a decent amount of machines to be able to test against and then and after that we'll fix our legacy wi-fi 2009 macbook air to show you how to fix that if you're stuck on mac os monterey or mac os ventura and you don't have any wi-fi so first let's look at our mac pro here we'll do a quick walkthrough on updating like i said we went through a crazy week on all these different updates our late 2013 mac pro when you get one of these pop-up messages again these come up when you log in and it checks for updates if you're on a machine that does not have any wi-fi because maybe it's broke you will not get that so you you can always still go to the GitHub and you can download it there if the auto patch is not working or you can get it from another machine and download it and bring it on over to this Mac. And we're going to do that with the legacy machine problem later. This will always tell you which version is available. This always tells you right here which version is new of and the version that you are on. So with this Mac Pro, when we did our walkthrough, we are on 1.4.1 and we want to be able to update to 1.4.2. So all we need to do is click download and install. Okay, we're going to extract the update. There's three steps in making sure all of the aspects of Open Core Legacy Patcher are updated. Number one is the app. That's step one complete. Step two is to build and install the Open Core configuration installed to the EFI partition on your hard drive. And then step three is to install all of those drivers with the post install root patches. What's nice is, is that we get this automatic pop-up now that will bring us to the next section to walk us through all steps of the process. So the next thing we want to be able to do is install the new open core configuration. We want to install to disk and our internal EFI. Password. You can see it mounted that EFI partition here and it unmounts it. If it doesn't unmount it, that's no big deal. Now we want to move to the next step because we're going to reboot here and we're going to install the post install root patches. Do our AMC legacy GCN and our modern wireless. We want to start that root patching. Now the good news is, is that we don't have to download the, and I always keep that KDK folder in library developer KDKs for the kernel debug kit. So you can see what's available in there. We don't have to do any downloads because we're not updating the operating system. So it's able to use the previous KDK that we already have installed in here. And now we are able to reboot and we're ready to be on 1.4.2. We'll click on restart. All right, we're back up after a reboot. So we can verify by going to the app section and we can see that our open core version is released 0.9.7 and we can return here to verify the post install root patches. We can click on the root patch button and we can see that and all the applicable patches are already installed and 1.4.2 on today, March 13th, 2024. So we are good to go on this Mac Pro 2013. We've got our good Wi-Fi and it's now auto joining without any problems there which is great we've got our bluetooth sound everything seems to be working a-ok -okay on this mac pro now let's jump over to our mac mini okay we're back up with our mac mini on 1.4.2 but before we continue here i want to know how your install went have you waited and you haven't installed yet have you installed early and you had a couple problems did you install in the middle somewhere and also had problems or you were a-ok -okay? let me know how your install goes i've been going through the comments and what's interesting is, is some of the issues that i've seen are around certain hardware models the imac 2012 to 2017 i'm going to see what we can do about uh getting some iMacs into the fold to be able to get those tested and MacBook Airs. Some of the hardware purchases are supported by my Patreon supporters. And I can't tell you how much I appreciate my Patreon supporters because they are able to help fund these purchases to be able to test these devices. So thank you so much. And hopefully we can bring those in so we can test more models so we can catch some of these issues before they happen to you. So let me know how your install went. Now we're back to our Mac mini. I want to show that we are A-OK. -okay. We've got our auto joined Wi-Fi. We got our Bluetooth sound. We had our IV bridge graphics and modern wireless installed with our root patches and everything is looking A-OK -okay for our Mac mini 2012. Now let's look at our 2010 Mac Pro. 
Okay, we've got our Mac Pro in 2010, and we are in 14.4. We've got our 1.4.2 application installed. We've got our root patches for a NVIDIA coupler. We have a metal compatible graphics card installed on this Mac Pro. We also have a newer Wi-Fi PCI card installed, and we have legacy USB 1.1 for this machine. And everything went okay. We've got our auto join. We've got our Bluetooth. Everything's looking very good on this machine. And this this Mac Pro is up and running. The graphics card that I'm using is a NVIDIA NVS 510 2 gigabytes, which is one of the lowest cost metal compatible cards available, but it gets the job done. So this Mac Pro is looking good to go. Now let's jump in and look at our broken 2009 MacBook Air on Ventura that has legacy Wi-Fi and get that fixed up. Okay, here is our mid-2009 MacBook Air, and it does utilize the legacy Wi-Fi patches. This machine is in pretty bad shape. We were unable to connect to Wi-Fi. It's trying to connect, but it can't. It can't see any networks. It's on, but it's not working, and we have the 13.6.5 update installed and that's why we are broken. That CVE vulnerability broke those legacy Wi-Fi patches. We are also stuck on 1.3.0 because we can't update to the latest version because I installed the 13.6.5 purposely before updating to 1.4.2 to show what would happen if we didn't do that and we're in a broken state and how to get this machine fixed. What we can do, for example, Mac mini or Mac Pro or your iMac and you can connect to Wi-Fi or a MacBook Pro with Thunderbolt Ethernet or or any of the MacBooks that have the built-in Ethernet. The good thing is is that some of the, the legacy machines, almost all of them have built-in Wi-Fi except this MacBook Air, which is not good either because the USB Ethernet adapter is also not functioning properly. So if we go to network, we cannot get access with our USB Ethernet dongle. The problem here is is that once we click on network, we cannot get access on our USB Ethernet Ethernet adapter, it does not connect. It is broke. Our Wi-Fi is off. We have no way to be able to connect to anything to be able to get access. So the only thing we can do now is we're going to have to download the 1.4.2 update app from another machine, and then we're going to have to get this to this device over USB. So let's do that now. So we'll click on the OpenCore Patcher GUI.app.zip and we will let this download it. And what we are going to do is we are going to put this onto our USB drive that I have here. So we'll let that finish. And once that's downloaded, we're gonna just transfer it over to our USB drive. And then we're gonna plug it into the MacBook Air. And that's how we're gonna be able to get that new app to get everything fixed up. Okay, it finished. So I'm not gonna copy the OpenCore app zip right over to our USB drive. Now, this might be the dot app or the zip it depends on how you have downloads to be able to open for example safari usually automatically unzips the zip but firefox will leave it in zip format Great, now it's in there. Let's now take this USB drive out and plug it into our MacBook Air. Now this MacBook Air, it doesn't have any ports other than the one USB port. So I had to connect it to the USB keyboard to be able to still operate the machine and get access to this USB drive. So now what we'll do is we'll copy over our .app.zip to our desktop. There goes the transfer. Great. Now we'll open up our Macintosh hard drive and go into the applications folder. And then we are going to overwrite the OpenCore Legacy Patcher application or the alias that's in here with the latest version. When we install the latest version of the new patches, it will replace that app with the proper alias so everything's all fixed up. So now let's open up that zip and we will copy over our application. If you had the application on the USB drive, you could have just copied it right to your applications folder. But we'll let this finish expanding and then we'll move it over. Great. So we'll take it from our desktop and put it right to our applications folder. It's gonna say if we wanna overwrite it, we do wanna replace it. And there it is. Now we've got our new 1.4.2 OpenCore Legacy Patcher application. We're gonna open it up. We're gonna eject our USB drive. Okay, if you get the message that it can't be verified, control click or right click on Open Core Patcher and then click open. And it should give us the ability to still open it up even though it can't check for malware on this application. So we'll give it a second to do that again. Now we have an open button and we'll click on that open. 
And there we go, 1.4.2. Now we can install the open core and root patches to be able to fix our Wi-Fi and auto join issue. Let's click on build and install open core. We want to install the disk on our disk zero and EFI. Password. Now we don't want to reboot. We want to ignore because we want to go back to the main menu and install the post install root patches so we get it all done in one reboot. Now here we go, we've got our NVIDIA Tesla, our legacy wire wireless like we talked about, legacy keyboard backlight, and legacy 1.1. And the last time we patched this device was 1.3.0 on March 12th. So let's click on start root patching, yes. Password, and there we go. Now that's what we were talking about earlier. Even though we overwrote the alias, the root patching is copying that new version 1.4.2 to the library application support Tortinia, and it will create a new alias in there just like we had before with 1.3.0. Now it's gonna reboot the kernel cache. We give it a second here. All right, complete. Now all we need to do is reboot. Click on reboot and restart. Okay, we're back on the desktop. Now let's take a look at our Wi-Fi here. It is off, but let's see if it can see the networks now. And it can see the network, so that's a good step. Now let's see if we can actually connect to it by clicking on it. Let's see if we can connect to Wi-Fi here. I'm trying to connect. Ooh, we could have some problems here. So let's click on cancel. Let's do a removal of the Wi-Fi, no networks, and then reconnect again. So we'll go back into Wi-Fi settings, click on here and forget this network and remove okay we'll click on our wi-fi in the list and click connect we want to type in our password look at that we have wi-fi on our 2009 macbook air with 13.6.5 and 1.4.2 and let's make sure that that usb ethernet adapter is working on this macbook air so let's put it in now all right look at that we've got an ip address on our usb ethernet and we are looking good well i spoke too soon and this is why we test after i rebooted I wanted to make sure the Wi-Fi was okay and you might be able to see here it is not connecting so what I want to do in this situation is verify is it this machine is it a wider spread issue or what's going on here we did connect to Wi-Fi just a second ago we saw we were fully connected but could it be the auto join issue let's find out what I had to do was I went into the Wi-Fi menu and I clicked other so you could manually put your network name in here and the password and then click join and then I was able to connect. Let's see if that will hold after a reboot and it'll be able to auto join back to this network. So let's reboot now and we'll find out. Okay, we're back up after the reboot and it looks good with our Wi-Fi and auto join. We can see that we are connected to our own network. I did not have to manually connect to it. And we can see we do have an IP, a proper IP address. So we are looking good. If you have the problem with still connecting with Wi-Fi on Monterey or Ventura on Legacy uh, Wi-Fi Max, which is 2008 to around 2010, 2013, I got the list down in the description, a manual connection looks like it'll get around. Now keep in mind, this tr this workaround is nothing new. In the past when the patches had issues with Wi-Fi, a manual connection a lot of times would get things working again. Let me know if you're still having connection problems with your Wi-Fi in your older Mac, or even a newer modern, but I haven't seen anything wrong with modern Wi-Fi, especially after the auto join issue has been fixed. So again, let me know in the comments if you're still having problems with Wi-Fi. Brought another iMac online, a mid 2011, 27 inch iMac that does have legacy Wi-Fi patches that were a part of this. It was not working from the update and I caused it to have that issue again. So I had it on 1.3.0, then updated to one point, then updated to 13.6.5 and the Wi-Fi was broken, could not connect and actually ethernet was broken too. I moved over the 1.4.2 application from USB, installed the open core and root patches rebooted and Wi-Fi and ethernet were working immediately. So I did not have those same problems I did with the 2009 MacBook Air. And that's why I wanted to get one more machine in 
here to test to make sure that this wasn't a bigger problem than just that one machine. That it wraps it up for the OpenCore Legacy Patcher 1.4.2 update. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, and we'll catch you in the next video. Thanks.